All right, guys, time to get excited. This is the first of my two favorite lessons, graphing rational functions. And we're gonna take a, a slight detour from the book and approach it a little bit differently. Our first objective here is to find the domain of rational functions. And this is something that we've done before, but specifically we're gonna talk about dividing by zero. And uh, the sad, sad things that happen when you do. Um, anyway, we also have objective two, where we're just finding these things called asymptotes. Asymptotes, uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and then also the zeros of these rational functions. We found zeros before, but now we're putting it together with these rational functions that we've been talking about for a little bit. Okay, notice it, your assignment over there. Let's talk about it real quick. Um, these are both worksheets, nothing from the book, just worksheets. One of them I made, one of them I didn't. Okay, so here's our first question. I mean, objective. You're gonna be able to find the domain of a rational function. And in this, it's a huge sinkhole in some place. I hope it's not your house. But um, yeah, so it, it's often that in, in math, on the internet a lot, that whenever you divide by zero, you create black hole in time and space. And so that's what this thing is representing whenever we divide by zero. So talking about dividing by zero, why is it undefined? We've, you, you've been in math for quite some time and your teacher has always said, hey, you're not supposed to divide by zero. You plug it in the calculator and it says error. And why is it saying that? That's what we're gonna try to find out. So to answer that question, what we're going to do is we're going to examine this function, f of x equals 1 over x. Reason why is because if I put 0 in for x, I'd be dividing by 0. So instead of doing that, we're just going to get closer and closer to 0 from one side and the other side and see what we get close to. See what happens, okay? We're going to do it from both um, from 1 to 0 and from negative 1 to 0. Let's see what happens, okay? So here's the first one. The first one is approaching it from one, going closer and closer to zero. This is approaching it from the right. So if I stick one into the function, one divided by one, of course, is one. If I stick point one, that's getting closer to zero, right? Point one to that function, it's a reciprocal of one tenth, which is just 10. If I stick point zero one, a hundredth into that function, it's a hundred. If I stick a thousandth, it's a thousand. If I stick a uh, uh, thousandth, ten thousandth, it's ten thousand. What are we getting close to? As I get closer and closer to zero, I'm getting closer and closer to positive infinity. And this is what we say. As x approaches zero from, it's this little plus sign, that means approaches zero from the right. Then f of x is increasing without bound. It's going up to positive infinity. Is it ever going to get there? No, because nobody can. Okay, so, well, if that was the case, if that's all it was, we could just say, hey, when I divide by zero, it's infinity. However, there's this case. What if I start dividing by negative numbers instead? So now I'm going to approach it from the, the negative side, from the left side. So if I stick in negative one into that function, one divided by negative one is negative one, and so on. It's the same exact numbers as it was before, but they're all negative now. So what are we getting close to? As we approach zero this time from the left-hand side, we're going down to negative infinity. Negative infinity, there you are. So down at the bottom, this is what it says. As x approaches zero from the left, a little negative sign from the left, f of x is, approach, is decreasing without bound. That means it's getting going down to negative infinity. So, that's kind of a problem. On one side, we go up to positive infinity, and the other side, we go down to negative infinity. That's not supposed to happen whenever you divide by a number. Okay? So, let's look at it on a graph. Okay, you, you've seen me do this kind of thing, so let's actually see it on the graph. So the purple thing is the graph, both parts, both parts of it is the graph of that uh, 1 divided by x. And you can see 
if I approach zero from the right hand side, the graph keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up, but it never gets to zero. And from the left hand side, as I get closer to zero, it goes down, 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 and it never gets to zero. And that thing is called a vertical asymptote. So we get closer and closer to zero, but we never ever actually get to it. Okay, and uh, we also have this thing called a horizontal asymptote. It's the same kind of thing, except for a horizontal one. And in this case, it's the x-axis, y equals zero. So our rational graphs are going to have these cool things called asymptotes, which is a Greek word that means something like fall together, whatever. Okay, so like, uh, like we were just saying, we have asymptotes, and this means right here at zero, the graph is not continuous. Continuous means that I wouldn't have to lift my pencil off the page to draw the whole graph. But here I'd have to lift it off just to complete it from this part down here. And it's approaching two different values, a positive infinity and a negative infinity. So you put all of these things together, and that's why we can't divide by zero. Positive infinity, negative infinity, the graph is discontinuous. It is not continuous. Also, there's this. Where is it? Right, so this is what I was talking about at the very beginning of the lesson. These things are all over the internet. People make comments like this. You see something like that. Oh, somebody must have divided by zero. Congratulations, your math just destroyed a city. Man, that's tough. So, can't also divide by zero because you don't want to create a hole in time and space. All right, let's go back to our graph. All kidding aside. Okay, so the graph of... This is the parent function. The rational parent function is 1 divided by x. It's the graph that you see there. That graph is called a hyperbola. It's like parabola, but really excited. A hyperbola. Okay? Each of the purpley bits, those things are called branches, and this thing has two of them. Okay? We can use SRT transformations on this thing, and uh, what do you think this little a, this all, this A, this H, and this K are going to do? Well, let's check it out. We're going to look at this on Geometer Sketchpad and see what those parameters A, H, and K are going to do. Maybe it'll surprise you. Maybe you already know what to expect. In this Sketchpad demo, I've got myself the parent function, the rational function, parent function graphed. Uh, f of x equals 1 over x. The shape is called a hyperbola. Each one of these purpley bits is called a branch of the hyperbola. What I'm going to graph is um, the transformations on it. So it's multiplied times a. h is being subtracted from the x. And then I'm adding k. What do all of those things do? So let's start with the a, of course. Remember, we've looked at this before. And a scales all of the y values. So if I make this thing bigger than 1, I'm scaling the y values. Undo that. Right now, this point is at 1, 1. So if I multiply that by, let's say I put it right here at, get it pretty close to 3. There we go. So what I've just done is I've multiplied this point that was at 1 up to somewhere around 3, 3.05. Okay. And if I make it negative, whoop, it flips the whole thing over. It flips it across the x-axis, just like I would have expected it to do. Okay, so let's get that back where it was. No, not there. There. Okay, now let's move the h. h. What do you think the h is going to do? Is it going to be just like you expect, that it moves your graph to the right and to the left? Of course it does, and that's exactly what's happening. Here, let me go ahead and throw in asymptotes here. So you can see those things move along with it. Look at that, that's pretty sweet. Okay, so now let's put in our, throw our K up in here, and that's going to move the thing up and down. And you can see that whenever I do this, it's moving all of my X values right, left, up and down, and it's moving the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. 
and let's put this at some sensible number something that is pretty easy for you to tell something from the graph get it at one. Oh, there we go that's at one let's maybe get this thing at two are pretty close to two there we go and now look at the intersection of those two asymptotes it's moved to the right one two places and up one place it's now has its point intersection at two comma one all right and uh, I guess I didn't do this with those but uh, so that's pretty sweet Richter all right let's get back to that presentation